Kentucky just beat Arkansas 85 to 69 in a charity exhibition match. This was John Calipari's first time being Arkansas's head coach, and there was a lot of good things that Arkansas ran. Now it's only an exhibition, and Kansas was missing three of their key players, including Hunter Dickinson, who was preseason All-American. So it isn't maybe time to overreact to Kansas, but there are things to take away from both sides of the ball. I'm going to go through those in film breakdown right now. This first play that we're going to look at is something that Arkansas went to multiple times throughout the game, and that would be Toral Spain. So we'll go through the play right here. It's going to start off Arkansas bringing the ball up. And so what Arkansas is eventually going to set up is this staggered kind of pin down right here. Arkansas is going to twirl this first, though. And so he's going to come through and not come off both. And so from here, now they're going to flow into Spain. And, and so Spain is a back screen set for somebody who is setting a screen. Sometimes they slip out of that back screen, but basically that initial pin down now sets this up where they can get to a high pick and roll. And then they're going to replace this roll right here out of Spain action. And you're going to see, right, with Ivisic rolling to the rim, that's going to take Harris as the tagger with him. And now Wagner is going to be up top and get a good looking three, able to knock it down. So this next play right here, another example, I think, of Arkansas doing a good job of using their shooters, creating space off of pick and roll, and just putting Kansas in an overall tough spot. So this play that we're going to look at right here is going to be a similar concept. You're going to see Arkansas eventually start out right with a staggered pin down over here. And so what this is going to do is John L. Davis is going to come off of it. You're going to see it right there. Now, as John L. Davis comes off, he fakes like he's going to kind of cut through again. I don't know if this is particularly by design or if he just ends up going through both. But as he does, now he's going to kind of ghost this screen right here. And so now it's going to be another pick and roll. And so it's just different ways to get into a high pick and roll. Flan was phenomenal during this game, getting downhill, creating for himself and others. And now, again, look at where kind of Kansas has to be defensively. Their defense, they're kind of playing up near the level. And so now as Brazil rolls, Kansas is going to dig in right here. And what that's going to do with John L. Davis being a shooter one pass away, that means he's going to be wide open. He misses the shot, but it's still good action and kind of just good overall flow for Arkansas. I just think the overall movement that Arkansas had and pace within their offense was really good. We're going to look at another example of, I think, a really good play right here. And so as Arkansas has the ball, they're going to start, they're going to set up. It's eventually going to be kind of another pick and roll, but look how they're moving the ball across the perimeter. And then right here, it's basically just going to be get action. So they're going to throw it to Brazil right here. Then Wagner's going to come back, immediately come off of this and get it. And now right here, he does a great job of, of putting him in jail right here. And so once he keeps him on the back, as the roll happens, defender goes with him. Now Wagner's going to be able to kind of get into his spot. He draws the contact, finishes through contact for the end one. Just a really good job of putting the defense continually in tough spots. With Hunter Dickinson out, Dewan Harris was absolutely Kansas's kind of go-to guy within this game. KJ Adams was 4 of 10, didn't have the best night offensively. But Harris showed some good stuff, and I think also just the two-man game between Harris and Adams also proved to be pretty positive overall for Kansas. And we're going to look at an example of that right here, as Kansas is going to set up basically an empty side of pick and roll. And it's going to be a little bit of get action with it, where Harris throws ahead to Adams and immediately is going to come off and catch it. But nobody in the strong side corner, you have good spacing elsewhere. Now, Arkansas consistently, and we'll talk about it in a bit, did send over a lot of help. But now, coming off this empty side of pick and roll, as Harris is able to engage the Arkansas defender right here, and Adams is able to get behind Fland on the roll, that's going to open up this area right here, this pocket for Adams to work with. You're going to see Arkansas also kind of scrambling weak side and not rotating over. And so as Adam ca Adams catches this right here, he's now able just to kind of go up and finish at the rim using his athleticism to his advantage. Another example of it right here, that empty side of pick and roll that Kansas went to, and we're going to look at another clip. AJ Storr is going to have the ball up at the top of the key. He's going to eventually kind of go into a little bit of ISO. Nothing happens from there, so now he's going to kick it to Adams over in the corner. And so now you're going to see Harris coming along right here. And once again, very, very, very similar concept, right, where Adams is going to toss it to Harris, who comes off of the immediate screen. Empty sided, nobody in this strong side corner at all over here. And so now... As Harris comes off of this screen, this time with Fland really being behind Harris and Arkansas not fully committing to Harris, I mean, he's just going to keep it. And even though, look, I mean, four Arkansas defenders inside of the paints, 
It'll be something to monitor with what Kansas gets in respect to shooting from defenses. Harris isn't able to actually convert that layup right there, but it puts the defense in just enough rotation that as he comes off and as he's getting downhill, he forces Arkansas to be just pretty much a step behind, puts their big man Badonga in a good spot, be able to get the putback and go up and finish at the rim. Another thing that really stood out in terms of Arkansas as we flip to a little bit of defense is that their perimeter pressure was constant pretty much the entire night. So Kansas, you know, side out of bounds right here, is going to have to bring up the ball and just notice how like much Arkansas pressures. So sagging it off right there, allowing him to come up. And then once he's getting closer to half court, now is Arkansas is really going to dig in. And so now a little bit of pressure there, but then look at off ball two from Boogie Flans. And he's going to stick with Harris, kind of blow up this handoff right here. And by him being able to do that, applying this pressure, one, even if this handoff was successful, which spoiler, it wasn't, look at where it's happening. It's happening, I mean, at the logo, way out beyond the three point line. That is a win for Arkansas already. But then you're also going to get plays like this, where Flan's going to just be able to blow it up, goes off of Kansas, and now it's Arkansas ball going the other way. This is going to be another example of the perimeter pressure, but also a little bit of another concept that Arkansas ran that I think is going to be very interesting to monitor with how defenses respect Kansas or not, and that is they showed Kansas a lot of unders. Uh, so right here, Adams gets the ball. Brazil's guarding him. He is not respecting Adams even in the slightest as a shooter. And so he's allowing Adams to come in, dribble there. But then also look here. This is an under from Arkansas. This is basically saying, hey, if you shoot this three right here, we're going to be fine with it. We just want to make sure to keep you in front of us. So that's an under. And then uh, right again, right here, Adams is not getting any respect as a shooter. Obviously, the math changes a bit when Hunter Dickinson is in as, as the five spot instead of Badonga, but the concept is still same. And so then right here, as this ball comes back around, now you're going to see some of that perimeter pressure again. Boogie Flan just being able to, again, blow up another handoff. Now he's going to be able to get the ball and then go put on a show on the other end of the floor. In an exhibition where there probably shouldn't be too many overreactions, especially for Kansas without Hunter Dixon, without a couple other key players, like there shouldn't be too many overreactions. But one thing that's good to take away is Dewan Harris was very aggressive, both getting his shot and also shooting from three. He took 17 shots and he took five threes going four or five. And so when I mentioned those unders that Arkansas was showing, they're going to do one right here where flag is going to go under. Now he might be expecting a switch with, uh, with Wagner right here. And that just might be a miscommunication, but again, just kind of going under the screen, living with shots. Dewan Harris has to be willing to take and make those. And that's exactly what he does right there. For a lot of the night, Kansas was not able to put Arkansas into a ton of defensive rotation. This was one of the examples that they were. We're going to again point out Adams not being respected as a shooter at all and Brazil playing way off of him. Now as the ball swings, Kansas is going to you know, have a cut here and immediately flow into a little bit of an empty sided direct handoff right here. But instead of going off of the screen, they're going to go baseline and actually be able to attack kind of the inside foot and get downhill. And so now as they get into the paint, Brazil, who is guarding Adams, who is on the perimeter, he comes over to help to rotate because he's not worried about Adams on the perimeter. But Adams does a great job here of being able to just kind of put himself in a spot to be able to cut to the rim. And so as he's doing that, then that means that uh, David Coit is able to drop it off to him. And now he's able to go up, finish at the rim. So being able to use Adams in ways, even if he's not being respected as a shooter, is important. At times, Kansas would play a bit small with maybe Adams being kind of their five and playing a little bit more small ball. Now, at times, Arkansas would counter this with a Visich at the five, and he showed some good stuff in the post, but he's also well known for being a guy that can play out on the perimeter. And so Arkansas would go to this five outlook with lots of spacing. Kansas in general doesn't always want to provide the most help, and that's going to hurt him specifically on this play because if Arkansas can create an advantage, then that's going to be issues on the backside, and that's what happens here. So Flan's going to act like he's getting the handoff, and he's immediately going to cut back door. You're going to see a little bit of just a minimal cut right here, but it does occupy these two defenders enough from Kansas. So now as this backdoor pass comes, Adams is the quote-unquote center for Kansas right now. There is nobody here to protect the rim at all. There's nobody within the paint. Now Flan just has an easy cut all the way to the rim. 